I'm Bly Straub, the senior curator for the uh, archaeological project, and you are now in a space that we call the vault. It's where all the artifacts come after they've been processed, and they come to me for final cataloging and research. Um, the table in front of me here has a lot of the materials from the well that we have just excavated. Um, it's a marvelous collection of stuff. Uh, I, uh, I love my job, <laughs> and the reason why is because I really get to touch the materials and think about them and ponder them and, and figure out how they were used by the people who were here 400 years ago. It really brings the people back into the picture. Um, and then I try to interpret them for the public so that they can appreciate that connection as well. Um, some, some of the neater finds, um, it's this little bottle, it's incredible that it survived. Um, a little, just a little bit of the top, the neck has broken off. But inside, we actually found the remains of a few beetles. Um, and a specialist in insects has informed us that these are um, beetles that were brought from Europe. So they're not native to Virginia. And this is a sign of the introduction of invasive species by Europeans, which we know happened. Um, but it's kind of exciting that we've got definite evidence of that. Um, this is another little. Um, medicinal vial like the other one I just showed you. Um, it's a little bit smaller and this one's complete. Very, very rare. We do have um, other medicinal things such as uh, this. It's very fragile. See if I can pick it up without there. Um, this is known as a cupping glass. Um, you heat it to create a vacuum, stick it over a wound, and it's supposed to draw the poisons out of the body. Um, cupping glasses are actually used today by practitioners of acupuncture. Um, so it's, it's a long-standing sort of medicinal practice. Uh, the ceramic collection's really interesting from this um, feature. Uh, we have a lot of what we call border wear. Border, it means border of Hampshire and Surrey counties um, in England. And they were major suppliers to London during our time period of sort of utilitarian wares. Regardless of that, we have forms that they don't find in London. They're really rare, such as uh, this vessel, which looks very Spanish, um, but it's actually an, an English uh, double-handed costrel, double-handled costrel. Um, they don't find those in London, and they don't, also don't find uh, these little apothecary jars for holding medicine. So we've got some kind of different pattern going on here, pattern of supply. We have very few um, flat forms, in other words, very few dishes. Um, we think that they used a lot of wooden dishes called treen, um, but in this context we actually do have a number of these very small little plates. Um, which were used for individual servings of food. Um, German stoneware, of course, we find so much of that in our early context, and they have these lovely little faces, bearded faces on the neck. Um, you can see there are a number of them from this particular context, and we're trying to mend them together from pieces of the stoneware uh, and other parts of the site. Another really cool thing about this site is we have a lot of seashells, and they are not native to Virginia, um, such as this. This is a queen conch shell. Um, and this is a top shell, and this is just like a shell I picked up on my honeymoon many years ago from the West Indies. Um, these shells are all tropical shells. They're from uh, Bermuda or the West Indies. And they are being collected um, not only like we collect shells, kind of as souvenirs of places people have been, because the West Indies would be part of the route of sale for people coming here to Virginia. Um, and we also had a group shipwrecked in Bermuda who finally made it to Virginia in 1610. Um, but also because mariners uh, knew that they could turn these things, these objects, into money once they got back to London. Uh, gentlemen would actually ask mariners to collect objects of nature um, and would pay good prices for those because um, it was very important to gentlemen um, to study these objects, to catalog them, and put them in what we call cabinets of curiosities. It's like a mini uh, display case that they could show 
to their um, friends. Um, moving down here, uh, we have a very perplexing uh, <laughs> vessel. Um, it's made uh, in London. It's called Essex uh, Blackware, but the form is unknown so far. Um, I've been working with researchers in London trying to figure it out. You can see the distinctive thing about it is that it has this little hole here at the bottom. It's got two handles, one on each side. It's a double-handled cup. And we're thinking it probably has something to do with medicines, um, application of some medicinal substance. So we're still working on that one. We've got um, evidence of them looking for ores and other uh, precious uh, materials in the way of crucibles. I love this one. This is such a great vessel. Um, you can see it's got all these residues on it from some kind of high heat process. And if you look inside, you can actually see um, copper that's being poured out of the vessel. Um, these were made in Germany and they ha are made of special clays that have a lot of quartz grains in them, which means that they can be subjected to really high heat without breaking apart. Um, so we find quite a few of those um, being used by the colonists in their various um, metallurgical activities. These are other vessels used for those processes, but this one doesn't look like it's, it was used at all. Maybe that's why it survived intact. It's known as a distilling dish or scorifier uh, made in London. And these are often found um, in places where uh, they are looking for gold or they're trying to separate silver from gold. Um, these are used in that process. This huge vessel is a real stunner for us. <laughs> it's rare that we actually get a vessel to go up into, mend up into complete form. I think this was mended from around 72 pieces. Um, and this particular vessel is not from the London area where most of our other things are being sent from, but this is coming from the western part of England, uh, a county known as Somerset County. And we do know that um, the group that, that came here in 1609 as a fleet of ships um, actually stopped off in Plymouth to uh, supply their ships and to pick up horses. And um, it's very possible that that is the source of supply for this particular vessel. We have another one as well from this particular area. Um, the finger painting design is known from kilns in a specific area known as Dunyat. So we may even be able to in, uh, determine what kiln this particular vessel came from. You can see it's kind of messed up on the bottom part up to this mid-girth sort of thumbed rim which is joining the two halves of the vessel. It's actually thrown in two parts. And it does appear like perhaps it was buried up to this point in the soil. Um, and the sort of freeze-thaw of the environment may have caused this sort of um, spalling effect of the exterior of the vessel. Um, another complete thing, we didn't need to mend this one. <laughs> it's this little apothecary jar, but this is pretty special because it's Spanish. So again, how did, the, how did a Spanish apothecary jar end up at Jamestown? These are the kinds of things we're looking into. Um, you may notice that there are no iron objects on the table, and that's because we have to keep them in a special environment. But we are in the process of conserving those right now. And um, there are many interesting objects in, in that sort of collection, such as um, shoemakers, knives, um, arms and armor. Uh, so that will be fun once we get all those sort of cleaned up. Uh, another kind of interesting aspect um, to this feature is the obvious presence of, of Native Americans um, in the fort. And these are bone needles, which would be used by Indian women in um, making their basketry or their finely woven mats, the grass mats that the colonists talk about. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them from this one context. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so it just shows that the, the Indians were using their traditional tools 
to provide objects for the colonists' um, comfort. And then um, I have a very interesting artifact here, which is indicative of children. It's very hard to um, indicate children from the material culture. You know, they don't really leave anything that we can definitely say, uh, except for shoes. We found some little children's shoes. Uh, but this is a combination whistle and teething stick. And uh, it's got a piece of pink coral for the teething part. Uh, it was thought that coral kept away the evil eye. Uh, so that would protect, it had magical qualities that would protect the child. Um, it's very tiny, and as far as I know, this is the earliest one of these that has been found. Um, these combination teething sticks and uh, whistles uh, have been used or were made through the 19th century. So you'll actually see them still in existence in antique stores and that kind of thing, but often they're very large um, objects and they have bells on them, very different sort of form. So this is just sort of a snapshot view of the kinds of things that we've been finding in the well. We've got lots and lots more, um, hundreds of thousands of objects actually, and this is going to keep me busy for the rest of the winter and probably into the spring as well. <laughs>